So I just finally got this thing inside the door. <laughs> Pretty big package. But hey, cool stuff come in big boxes. So yay, Christmas time for me. <laughs> okay guys, so I'm back here for a second. Uh, again, here is the power supply. Give you a little bit more of a close up. Um, here is your build table. Again, the two resins that I got is the gray for prototypes. I got the emerald green um, for casting. Um, I started going through this box here real quick while I was pulling things apart. And I just thought I would show this to you. Not only they give you a really nice microfiber cloth, but then on top of that, check this out. We got a really nice set of clippers for uh, clipping the supports off. So, man, pretty nice. They kind of think of everything here, making sure that you get everything to get going right out of the box. I mean, they're, they're, no joke about that, that's for sure. So, again, here's our power cable that goes over there to that power supply, I'm sure. Uh, let's see, it looks like an, another computer power cable. Okay, so here's one of those expensive vats. Uh, I kind of don't want to mess that up in any way, so we will set that aside over there. Um, this is some kind of foam. Of, I'm sure I'm going to find out what that's for. Again, here's our little funnel with a strainer built in in order to strain your resin when you pull it out of your vats. Um, not sure what these are. I'll have to pull these out and we'll have to take a look at this in a little bit here. Um, so it looks like we got a container here. I'm sure that's to put probably alcohol in or uh, in order to uh, clean the, the models. I'm assuming that's what they put that in there for. Um, and again, some razor blades. And I'm not sure what's inside. Those look like filters there. Hey, check it out. Got a nice little scraper. We all know what that's for. That's for pulling those babies off of the build table. Huh, even comes with a handy dandy spatula. And now I've got a bazillion of these things now. And once again, we got another um, another vat. So that's pretty much it in the box. And again, you know, with all this stuff here, they've pretty much have you fully equipped. So when you get the uh, the printer, you don't have to go out and buy anything. Um, you just set it up and go. So let's go do that. Back, um, I was just quickly getting the serial number, which is right down here, because I was going to do the online registration real quick. And if you notice, the only bad thing I see so far is it looks like they put a moisture packet when they pack these, and the darn thing, it exploded. So you can see all these tiny little particles of of this uh, stuff from the moisture pack. So I'm kind of crossing my fingers that, 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 that that's not going to create any problems. But um, I'm just going to make sure that I get that vacuumed out really, really well uh, before we get everything all set up. So again, uh, I'll be back in just a few. Thanks. Hey guys, I'm back. So, you know, just to pick up where I left off, I went over and uh, I followed the little brochure that came with the uh, with the B9 Core 550, went to the uh, the web address, and it was kind of really nice because they brought up a whole starter pack, registered your uh, your printer, uh, takes you over, if you, it puts you in contact with whoever you bought it from in order to get your startup uh, if you want to go through uh, a hands-on startup and hours worth of training. So again, another really nice feature that's included with the, the printer. Um, the other great thing is this web page it created, which was really nice, um, had you download the software, and there's a couple of really nice videos. 
in order to get you uh, off the ground and running. Um, so anyway, so let's take a look at those just real quick. Okay, so here's the uh, B9 startup page. And like I said, you, you know, there's several videos here. If I actually uh, uh, click on this, um, here's where you go ahead and you download the software. Um, they have the manual here. And then here you can schedule your, your factory remote startup. So again, you know, Mike has gone out of his way to really simplify everything about this uh, this whole uh, uh, printer and, and getting things going. Um, then they have a, a, a full getting started video, takes you through everything, um, shows you how to put the, uh, the resin in the vats and then uh, set up a print job and, uh, and get going, which is what we're gonna go do here in just a minute. And then uh, looks like lastly here, um, there's this whole video um, on the vats and I'm sure I didn't actually watch this one yet, but we'll do that later. So I downloaded the software and uh, kind of the cool thing, um, this really uh, makes it easy. It allows you to then name the, the, uh, the printer, whatever you want, it gives the serial number and the IP address. Um, Here's the uh, the printer connections and the printers that you have currently uh, connected uh, with the software. So you could actually have multiple printers over here and just keep adding them. I mean, the software is really slick. Uh, they did a great job on it. And the, the other thing that I really like about it is it's really snappy, I've noticed. Um, again, just really well thought out and uh, it's a good deal. So let's go uh, take a look at the printer now. Okay, so I'm back again. Here we are, we're over in my uh, print room here. So there you can see um, it right next to the, the Solus printer I've got. Sorry, everything's kind of uh, messed up right now. Like I said, I've had some troubles with the Solus, had to rip things apart. I just have crap laying everywhere right now and haven't cleaned up. And there's the beast. The old Revo Mill is sitting there ready to go. Just got a job for that guy. So he's going to be up and running here shortly. Um, so anyways, so let's get back here to the B9 because that's what we're here for. So um, when you come in here, one of the things, um, I'm just going to go over the, uh, the accessories that came with this again. So here's the uh, VAT. The first thing I'm going to show you right, out of, right off the bat is... They made these lids uh, for these vats, and they're stackable. And you can see that because here I have the other two vats stacked on top of each other right down here. So Mike, again, made it really nice for you to be able to keep uh, resin. There's even a little cutout here. This top is like a rubberized material. And the cool part is, is that, you know, you could put a, uh, a label on here. Um, in order to store these and you'll know what resins in what without even pulling this uh, this cover off so this rubberized cover comes off that exposes the uh, the window for the resin um, you know again the the first thing I did though is I took uh, I took one of these uh, these Zeiss uh, lens cleaners and I took each of the uh, each of the vats, because I did notice on on two of the vats had a had a fingerprint on the bottom side, probably you know when they were handling packing them and stuff. So I just made sure that those were cleaned off really good. There was a little bit of lint and um, you know sitting in here, which is nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, those are the kind of things you're going to run into. But of course, since I've been printing a while, um, I know that I want to get that stuff cleaned out of there. So I'm going to be printing this, uh, the B9 gray, because I'm really interested in finding out how that prints, uh, particularly because I do a lot of these prototypes I was telling everybody about. Here's the uh, little scraper for pulling the parts off of the build table. Here's you know a spatula that comes with it. 
I think these are must be some kind of filters or something. I, I didn't really break that out and look. Again, real nice set of cutters. I've got a bunch of these things. I'll have to sell them. Um, anyways, here's some spare filters for the fans that are on the back of the unit. Um, what these are, these are gloves in here. So he even gives you gloves right out of the box. I mean, there's a couple pair in here. It's not just one. And then here's the, the strainer with the uh, uh, funnel so that you can put the resin back in the main uh, resin tub or holder or whatever you want to call it, the bottle. And then a nice microfiber cloth. And then, of course, a little spray bottle, which, again, I'm assuming they want you to fill that with the isopropyl alcohol. And I actually use a spray um, spray container for that so I don't know if I'll use that yet or not we'll, we'll see so anyways let's go back over here to the printer now one of the things has a nice USB port on the front here so that you can transfer models that way um, let's go ahead and power this up here and the first thing I did is I went into settings here and um, and right up here on the top, this tells you, you know, about your machine. You can go over here and, and tap on here and um, and name your printer, which is what I did. Um, and then again, there's your network. Um, gives you your information there. Um, security, you can set up a password if you want. There's uh, your language. Uh, the type of keyboard you want it when that will show up. Um, Plugins. I'm not sure what this is going to be, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what that's all about. Um, and then the about just tells you about it. And then there's actually a reset where you can reset everything back to factory. Um, the little bit of information I got off the video is that that will also reset. Uh, it'll anything that's in the uh, folders uh, will be gone. So anything in your library, it'll wipe all that out. So. Anyways, uh, but the one thing I've noticed with this is, I mean, this this touch screen is just really nice. Real light touch. Um, works really well. It's very reactive, so it's not like, um, you know, some of these uh, tablets and stuff you get that are really inexpensive and they're, um, they just kind of lag. Um, this, this thing, you know, it reacts to your touch immediately. Um, real, it's really nice. So again, you know, I'm, I'm impressed so far. So when you pull this down, I already stuck the, uh, the build table in there. It's got a fan in the back. So, um, my understanding is that helps filter the smell. So you don't have that resin smell. Um, they even have like this little green, uh, line that gets exposed when the, uh, that locks into place. Um, you, that actually shows up and it tells you that you've properly installed it. Um, this guy, like I said, this thing is just really major heavy duty and uh, they must have some kind of treatment on this. It has a little bit different, unusual geometry. I'm not sure what the purpose of it, but this thing's got some heft. Um, and as you can see, it only has one way it can go on. Um, it's got a slot. So it kind of locks it in place, and then when you screw it down, that, there's literally no movement whatsoever. So we'll put that back in there. And I'm going to tighten that down real quick. And there we go. So I think what we'll do here, let's go ahead and get this set up to print. So I have no idea what this sample print is, but hey, let's do it. So like I said, I want to I want to start off with the gray. Um, I, again, I have my reasons for that. So I have the gray selected there. So you have 30 microns, 50, 110, which is medium detail, and 170, which is a super high speed. But you know, look at this though. I, I don't know what this part is. So, but even still, it's 25 minutes when you when you flip it over to the 110 micron the medium detail that drops this part down in this gray material to 14 minutes right there is in a nutshell is one of the main reasons um, I bought this machine but I'll tell you what 
so far I'm I'm pretty impressed so let's get this baby going and see what it does so I'm gonna start off I'm gonna do this 20 well heck let's just do a couple of them tonight so I'll do I'll just start off with this medium detail uh, and let's see what it does so it takes you to the next screen prepare for printing so I think we're gonna have to get that vat put in there so now when I uh, when I looked at the video it said for sure you want to basically put about a quarter inch yeah Travis don't yell at me I know I don't have any gloves on um, there is a max fill line right here so you know you can't really goof um, the way they have this set up so let's uh, let's get some of this in here So I would say for this beginning print, that's going to be fine. I, I, you know, unless it's a big giant part, I just can't imagine uh, we're going to need any more than that. So, all right, so we want to clean that off. But first, let's go ahead and stick this in here. Okay, so I'm opening this up. And basically, according to the instructions... We're just going to slide this right in here. And as you can see, there's these two little tabs under here that basically this is in a slot and you just slide this baby back. And they basically said that you're going to feel a little bit of resistance. And as it does, you continue to apply a little pressure and you hear a little click. And there we are, we have this little green line here. So when you see that green line, it's supposed to be in there. All right, so we'll fold this up. And I guess we're gonna hit print. Um, yeah, there's our layer count. Gives you the slice type. Because, of course, we didn't go in and do any customizing on that, so we'll just start with this. So there we go. It's off to the races. I don't know if that helped me at all, but you can see the build table lowering into the vat. Let's see if we can do it better. There we go. Sorry for the light reflections. So I guess this is hitting the initial layer and there we go. So we are off. The one thing that's kind of interesting, you don't really see any light or anything. So again, that that projector under there, I guess, is completely, I mean, with the way this vat design, you don't get any of that ex exterior light that you're being exposed to at all so that's a another plus um, again something that, that you just don't think about but being around this Solus printer if you uh, look at the Solus here you get that extra that light you're seeing it because it, it just uh, runs into a mirror um, and projected into the vat so just a completely different thought out setup so We'll, I'll be back as soon as uh, we get that part out. Okay, so I'm back real quick again. Um, so I just wanted to show you that um, while the printer is printing, the screen that comes up gives you your percentage um, here, percentage of time left. Um, here uh, you can press to abort if you need to. Um, we can pause. Uh, the print, which I'm sure will lift the build table. Um, it tells you up here, 
you know, your the name of your printer. Um, this is the print name, so this is a sample print 550 file. Here's the estimated remaining time, 11 minutes. You've got your current speed, the millimeters per hour, uh, the average speed, millimeters per hour, the layer that you're on, 18 of 197, what material you're running, and then lastly, uh, what your build quality is that, you've, that you're running. So again, um, pretty cool stuff. Um, I like it. All right, guys. Well, I'm back here with some video of this part. And, um, and I wish I could get an even better shot of this because I'm, I'm telling you right now, look at that, man. You can even see the stairs inside that stinking ass ca that castle. Jeez. Unreal. And the mesh. Guys, this is a 110 micron. I mean, this is ridiculous. So, this is the prototype again. And see, for the stuff I'm doing... And this was 15, not even 15 minutes. It was 14, what, 14 and a half minutes? I don't know. I got to go back and look myself now. Um, man, I don't know. I, okay, so I'm speechless. Dang, look at that. That is sweet. Well, there you have it, guys. I mean... Man, I wish I could get this focused even better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the 35 millimeter out, and I'm gonna be taking some pictures for you, um, some really close up stuff, so you can kind of get an even better feel for this. Cause I'm telling you, this mesh stuff. Wow, it, I can't wait to see what this thing does. You know, down at 30 micron. I mean. Wow, it's something. I mean, there you can kind of see a little bit in the print lines. But again, remember, I didn't do any smoothing or anything on this. This is just a prefab, you know, deal they've got in there. I can't wait to get some parts going. Wow, pretty impressive, at least for me. All right, guys, well, that's a wrap. Um, you know, just looking at everything from the time I actually decided to to buy the B9, and um, and Fernando sent me over. He showed me exactly what to do on the website for ordering. Um, you know, the just the order process was just really super simple, very easy. Um, you know, they kind of accounted for everything different forms of payment, including, you know, a check, which basically puts your printer on hold. And then, um, cause I went to my bank, um, just the rates were a lot better. So, uh, anyways, I, I just can't, I just can't get over it, frankly. Um, once I actually got the printer ordered, um, you know, I paid extra for shipping. Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, I wanted to get it here quickly. So I had, I sent the, the check overnight uh, to, on Thursday, I think it was, of last week. Um, they got the check Friday. They processed the order by the end of the day. And I paid for two-day shipping, which was still only about $200. Um, yeah, it's a lot, but, I mean, ground would have been like $55 to me where I'm at. Um, you could literally have overnighted it for like 400 um, I was looking at some other printers and the quotes I got in the email just to ship the printers were $500. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, anyways, I, you know, I just can't say enough. I'm, I'm kind of impressed with the, the package, the way they did it. Then when I went to get the printer today, it was really well packaged, um, double boxed, like I said, had the the padding in the only faux pas I had was that um, 
the the pack of the uh, the absorbent material that they put in, you know, for the electronics and things, um, it broke open. I mean, fortunately, it wasn't spread more than what it was. I'm hoping that it. I mean, the printer seemed to work perfectly fine, so I'm not anticipating any trouble or anything with that. I vacuumed it out thoroughly, um, so we'll see where that goes. But anyways, um, heavy duty. I mean, it it it's heavier than what actually what I thought it was going to be. But the other thing that's really nice is that it takes up so much less space and just setting the software up too and connecting to the printer through the Wi-Fi. I mean, it was seamless and the new B9 software is, it, it's lightning fast. It's very responsive, very quick. Um, I kind of have some really high hopes for this and, uh, you know, and, and you saw that test print, obviously I'm going to be posting some more stuff. I'll, I'll get my 35 millimeter out and just take some real detailed, uh, pictures for everybody as we go, particularly as I start developing some of these more complex designs I, I have in mind, but, um, dang man, I, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of stoked. I'm I'm actually kicking myself now that I futzed around as long as I have, because this is the first thing I've had in, in my possession where, um, you know, the mill you can walk away, but it still takes a lot of setup and stuff. Th this, they thought they thought this through really well. Um, I don't know. I'm a fanboy now, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm still going to keep one of my Solus printers that I'm going to sell the other one, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I kind of don't see anything else other than this is what I'm probably going to use every day. So, um, anyways, there it is. Take it or leave it, whatever. I, I promised, uh, Trav that I would uh, throw this up and Trav, I hope I'm going to get some freaking points for this. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Kev out.